Well, winter time's here. Amen. Amen. You know, I know we have to have it, and it uh, doesn't mean I have to like it. Amen. <laughs> you know, cold and snowy weather is supposed to be weather that you go and play in, and then you come back to the warm spring weather, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, but uh, Justin can relate. He, he lives up in Colorado, up in, just outside of Boulder, up in the foothills, so, so he's real familiar about the snow and, and cold. Before we read, I won't pray, but <clears throat> I did turn to Luke 24, Luke 24, verses 44 through 49. You know, it's interesting how so many little things, even like a humming in a sound system, things that don't affect the hearing, but yet they're little distractions. It's, it's amazing how those will, will sometimes, we, if we're not careful, we'll let those become the focus of our attention. Not just a Savior. Luke 24, 44 through 49. Then he said to them, There are words which I have spoken to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and the prophets, and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might com comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it is necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And the repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you endue the power from on high. Just right across the page in my Bible anyway, in John, 
first chapter in verse 12 says, But as many as received him, them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. That's a pretty straightforward, definite conversation about salvation. But he's more than just our Savior. Father, we just give you praise today. Father, I give you praise for your words today. Father, right now, I just pray that in the name of Jesus that you would just do away with all distractions right now. Father, you would just remove them from this place. And Father, that you and you alone will be our focal point for the rest of this time together and always. Father, I just thank you. Thank you for your words. Thank you for your touch in our lives. Thank you for all that you've done. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus you would help us to just understand fully what you desire to do in and through us moving forward. And we pray it in Jesus' name. So not just a Savior. He's way much more than just a Savior. And a Savior is a powerful thing. I mean, how great it is. It is the most important thing. Because without that salvation experience, we cannot continue in his purpose for us in life. We can continue in life. We can continue to do well. We can continue to succeed in what we, we set forth in. But without that salvation experience, it's kind of like clanging symbols. Our words are... You know, it looks good. It is good. But unless we've had that salvation experience, we're giving the credit to the wrong person. Amen. It's in what we've achieved, what we have done, and not on what our Father in heaven has done in and through us and for us. So he's not just our Savior. He's our Father. In Isaiah 64, 8 it says, But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. And all we are the work of your hands. We are the work of the Father's hands. All we are, all we are, is because of how God has created us. We've got ones that, that <clears throat> we've got many out that aren't saved. And are doing well and succeeding. And, and sometimes us as Christians, we like to look at it and say, well, how are they doing such good things and accomplishing so much? And we're struggling over here. Yes, 
from God. Those talents are gifts from God. I look around this room and, and just think of the talents that are in this room right here. Each in its own different way. We've got techie folks. <laughs> We got Siri folks. <laughs> we got folks. <laughs> yeah. God created us. God gifted us with talents. You know, and what is exciting is to see when we truly come to understanding of that and see how God just blossoms those talents. And how he used them in his kingdom to create, to build his kingdom that he might be glorified. And we will be glorified through it. He said, Well, I don't want God to get all the glory. Well, we should. Because when we give the glory, so are we. Like what it says in the New Living Translation, it puts it this way in 1 Corinthians 8, 6. But we know that there is only one God, the Father, who created everything. And we exist for Him. And there is only one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom God made everything. And through whom we have been given life. Wow. Through him, we have been given life. And not just life on this earth, but the more important life, and that is eternal life, that we receive because of the penalty that was paid on the cross for you and for me. So he's our father. He's the creator. The detailed acts of creation are laid out in Genesis, Genesis 1, 1 through 25. God spoke. And in, the, in Isaiah 66, 2 we read, My hands have made the heavens and the earth, and they are mine. I, the Lord, have spoken. <coughs> Creation. Man, we got people flocking to this area right now to, to witness God's glorious creation. Amen. All the flock, all the leaves changing colors. You know, I mean, thousands of people over the last month have been flocking through this area to just, to just, oh, come to see the colors. Come to see the color change. Amen. Come to witness God's creation. Most of you know I love to play golf. And yes, I love to do well in golf. I think that was the Scots, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, one of the most attractive things to golf for me is the beauty of the golf course. How they, how, you know, because golf course designers, they, they cut through different parts of, of land. Just unveiling certain beauties that are in there that might not have been seen before they cleared the, the land. And then, of course, they add beautiful green grass and, and ugly bunkers. I mean, <laughs> <I got it. laughs> but it's, it's his creation. Amen. 
You know, and we get the opportunity to witness that every day of our lives. And it doesn't matter where we're at. You know, I was raised out in West Texas where it is just flat, sandy, flat, sandy, flat, sandy. And some oil mixed in that sand. But yet, even an old mesquite tree, when it is when it is blossoming in the spring, is a beautiful sight. Adds beauty to that ugliness. God's creation. Look at your neighbor. It's God's creation. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter how they act. What matters is they are a creation of God the Father. Back several weeks ago, we talked about seeing people through Jesus' eyes. We have to understand that, that people are a creation of the Lord. Some have, have stepped through that porthole and, and asked for his salvation and, and are, are hopefully walking in where God is leading them. Some haven't stepped across that. And God calls us to be the light to those that they can see the darkness that they're walking in. Not by pointing out the darkness as much as letting them see the light. The more darkness when we point out to people, the more walls build up. They don't want to hear what they're doing wrong. They need to be seeing the light in us. Seeing it operate in and through us. Let that light shine. What was that three three weeks or so or a while ago? <laughs> that we would be the light. Not that people would look at, oh, look at Phil. Or look at Mary. Or look at Alan. But that they would see the glorious love of Christ in everything they do. Amen. Everything we do. We can, can, we can despise what somebody's doing. But we're still called to love them. When that happens, the light of Jesus is shining in us. It doesn't build us up because humanly we can't do it on our own. This is not possible. So, let's turn to Isaiah 48, 17. He is our teacher. Isaiah 48, 17. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. It wasn't until... It, it wasn't even until this morning when I was reviewing my notes and I looked back at that scripture that the word that, that caught my, that really caught my eye this morning was who teaches you to profit. Now, most of us would identify that first kickoff on that profit as being 
monetary. But I believe he's teaching us to profit as we begin to walk with him by his guidance that he profits our life. He, he brings up the joy. He rises up joy in us that might have never come forward without his teaching us Amen. how we should walk. So, he's our father. He's the creator. He's our teacher. He's the healer. Jehovah Rapha, or Jehovah Rapha, is mentioned 60 times. It means restore, to heal, or to make healthful. You think if it was mentioned 60 times that it's pretty important? Yes. I think so. 60 times. Wow. That's one that that's one that we believe but we don't like to talk about it a lot. In Psalms 103, 2 and 4, 2 through 4. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction. Who redeems your life from destruction. Before Christ, we were on a pathway to destruction. After Christ, we're restored from that destruction into life. Beautiful life. Beautiful life. Does it mean everything's going to go just perfect? No. No. But as I said last week, we know that he is there with us. He's got us. We like to say he's got our back. As I said last week, I, I, I don't agree with that he's got our back. I believe he's got our front. He goes before us. So, This is the one that, this, this turn, this turn to John 15, verse 15. He is our friend. John 15, 15. No longer do I call you a servant. Do I call you servants? For a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. Everything that he's heard from his Father he made known to us. Our friend. I think this is an area that so many times Christians We have a hard time getting past the sovereignty of God and understand that he truly wants to be our friend. He wants to be more than just our sovereign God. He wants to be our friend. He wants to be our helper. He wants to help us, guide us in our steps so we'll stumble less. Our friend. He wants to be our friend. We, he is our sovereign God. He is the creator of all things. Which 
which makes him being our friend even that much more precious. Because we can go before him. We don't have to go through somebody. We can go before him and say, Jesus, Complete in Him. Hold fast to Him. <clears throat> Don't let the circumstances of life, the pain and distractions we face, excites me. It excites me to know that the creator of this universe, our sovereign God, our Lord and Savior, wants to be my friend. He wants to just, he just wants to say, Come on, let's go for a walk. Amen. Let's talk about what you're going through. Let's talk about what's going on in your life. Let's talk about the struggles you're going through. The pains, the, 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 the health issues that aren't, that I haven't touched yet. Let's talk about it. You know, some people would call a friend. Some people call a brother or sister and just talk about what's going on in life. Good and bad. We have a Savior, a Lord, that we can talk to every minute. We don't have to pick up a phone. We don't have to have reception. We don't have to have cell reception. He's right here. He's right here, right now. He wants to talk to you right now. He wants to be your friend. He wants that light that he's put in you. He wants to help you uncover it so it can just shine. So, so you will have such peace such joy, such happiness from what he's doing in you that you won't be worried about what he's doing in somebody else because of what he's doing in you. But at the same time, because of that, 
He's working in somebody else's life that you're coming in contact with, Bergie. You know, walking down the streets of Eureka Springs. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Help me throw that cover off. Let your light shine. Let you that's in me come out. Not me, but you. Not just a savior. He's so much more. So much more. So much more. He takes broken people. He takes broken people. Men's them. Shows that he just wants to be your friend. He just wants to be your friend. He just wants to, he just wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to hear. He wants to hear. When you're excited about something that he's done around you, for you, in you. He wants to hear when you're hurting. He cares. He cares. He cares for you. Man. Okay. Man. What a glorious time. How precious it is. How precious it is when we truly understand who he really is. I mean, think about it. Who he really is. So we, we tend to put him up here, which is where he deserves, but we tend to put him up here and leave him up here. Yeah. He wants to be right here. He is right here. He wants us to acknowledge that he's right here with us. There's nothing that's going on in our lives that he doesn't know. Nothing. Well.